was talking about the, the response of this team. Obviously, first play is a turnover. Can you talk about just the resolve, especially the offense, I guess, showed? Yeah, I thought we did great. Um, 63 points is hard to do in a conference game. And, um, I mean, they stopped us a few times. But uh, I thought we responded really well to what, um, obviously, is the worst way to start a game. But it happens sometimes. You just respond and can go to the next play. Walk us through that scramble and duck under and sidearm throw. I mean, like, everything about that boat was obviously a highlight reel moment. Well, uh, you know, we had a one-on-one -on -one to the sideline. Their DB did a good job. Um, and then, you know, guy got off. And honestly, it kind of happened quick. Um, just kind of tried to avoid the guy. And then luckily I looked up and Treshawn had done a good job of moving to get open. And it uh, allowed me to get the ball out quick. Uh, but, you know, I think uh, we get situations like that all the time and you just got to make plays. How would you contrast what goes into making a play like that versus I think it was your second touchdown to Tez, which was just that easy throw and catch fade that looks about as easy as football can be there? Well, yeah, the second one's definitely easier than the first, but it's all about, um, I guess, when things break down, just, you know, instinct and stuff takes over. You don't really plan any of that. You just avoid, and that's why in practice you got to practice those um, you know, sudden movements and those difficult situations so that when you get in a game, your body's not um, just, it's not out of nowhere and your body's used to it. Did, did Tess say anything to you after that first drive? And it looks like he kind of made up for that one. Yeah, he made up for it. Um, he can do that all the time if he wants to go for 180. What, what made this a game where he could be so, where he could be so effective, Tess? Well, I think, you know, it wasn't even planned. I think he just took the moment and ran with it. You know, he was, like he told me, he was living in the moment and we're not even sure, you know, how it happened, it's just you go out there and you execute. And when his number was called, he answered. And, you know, I think you can look at the whole entire game and, and that story you can pull from is like on the first play of the game, it doesn't go how you want it. You could say, um, you know, anybody could have gone in the tank after that. That's a tough play to come back from. Not what you want to go out there and do, but, uh, you know, your response is all about, um, you know, the most important thing. And your response is how um, you, you're usually um, seen as a person and I thought he came out and had a great response and he took over the game after that and you know that's what you see with a lot of our guys you see mistakes all the time and you see us respond and I think it's also um, good for the sideline to kind of respond like that just encourage those guys build them up because um, you never know the difference in a game could be that player who has to come back from that deficit. Speaking of responses, how would you describe the way the team has responded from Seattle? Uh, I'd say elite. I'd say we've done really good. Um, obviously, that was um, you know a tough day, but I think that we have done exactly what um, I think we've done the best we can out of that situation. I think we've come back from it. We have put together a bunch of really good wins, um, and I think we've been dynamic really in our whole team. I think. Defense, special teams, and offense has all responded and, and started to play really good at this point in the season. Was there a point maybe that week or after the game when you realized this isn't going to derail our season? Yeah, right after the game, it was silent. There wasn't a whole lot going on in that locker room. And I think it's, it's showed the past three weeks. And obviously, we're not done. We're going to have to have another great week of prep. Um, there's still so much to grow from, especially from this game. And I think that's what's awesome looking back on it is that we see our potential, but we know, I think, we know we can play better, and I think that we see that, and, and a lot of guys are taking it personal and taking pride in the response, and that's all you can ask for. Going back to the first quarter, just as a leader on this team, when there's things happening like miscommunications, penalties, just as a leader, like what is your message to the team? How did you get them back on track to make sure you didn't have to wait till halftime to have that conversation, that you made that adjustment before halftime? Well, just, uh, you know, scratch the surface. I think you got to go back into it and say, all right, it's a new new drive. Um, it's a new response. And how are you going to go out here and perform? And it all starts with a smile on your face and some energy on the sideline. And when those guys get going, they're smiling, they're cutting up, they're having a good time. Everybody plays better. And, you know, there was times, it was like 14 to 10, and we had had a few turnovers in it. Hatton looked pretty for us, and we just kind of calmed back down. We settled in, and we said, hey, we're just going to go out here and execute, put a drive together with no penalties, and that's what we did. We went out and scored. And so once you do it once, and then you know you can do it again, you just continue to do that throughout the game. And 
it was good to see a response like that. It's not always going to be perfect, but that's how you respond to it. Does it change the, the locker room dynamics at all when you guys are as balanced as you are? Like, it, like there's no part of this team where it's like we need this one group to go save us. I mean, it's it's everybody has a chance to go out there and make plays, and the defense can't count on one person getting the ball, getting all the touches, and so it's hard for a defense to stop us. And um, I think we just continuously show that you know we have so many playmakers and have so many guys that can. Um, really go and score. I think we had like probably eight different guys score today, maybe six. Um, and I think it just shows like our potential as an offense and the playmakers we have and how much fun we have. What's the plays that stand out to you on a day like this, Bo? I mean, you close 21 of 23, you throw four touchdowns, you run for a couple. To me, the third down completion to Tez before the touchdown because you had to pick up a low snap stands out. But like, what stands out to you on a day where you have this kind of success? Well, honestly, those, it's going to sound crazy, but those nine incompletions, um, imagine how much more efficient our offense could have been and imagine how much more explosive we could have been if you know, I just put those a little bit better passes and let those guys do it. Because you show it over and over what those guys can do once they get the ball. So. You know, I'm serious. I really want to go 80% or better. And um, I, after watching game after game, you know, we know we can do it. It's just the little things that we got to correct. And obviously, the two turnovers not good in the first quarter, and then penalties. We got to find a way to cut out the penalties. But holdings and aggressive play and all that's kind of it's a judgment call, and it is what it is. But the plays that we are killing ourselves, we got to really look at and evaluate and see how we can change moving forward. What happened on the deflected snap? Uh, miscommunication on snap timing, that's all it was. And we do that stuff all the time and get it executed. So it's one of those, um, you know, errors that it was huge today. And, um, you know, it, we could have minimized it maybe just with a little bit more communication. And um, that's on me. You know, it, whenever there's a, a situation like that, I always look at myself and say, okay, how could I have communicated that better? How could we have? Um, executed that one better and that was poor on my my part and again you want to play a four quarter game and not get lackadaisical at all and a few times today just very very small times you know lose our focus and lose my focus and got to get back into the important things. A couple of your teammates have said today that you do stuff every day that surprises them others have said that you know stuff like the duck under throw it's just it's whatever it's just you being you do you ever do things that kind of surprise yourselves in a way they're like oh I tried that and it actually worked. No, um, every, I mean, not really, because, you know, it's practice. You practice these things, and I know I'm capable of doing it, and um, it's just reacting and just, you know, being a football player, and I think we got a lot of guys on our team that do that. You know, Bucky does that every day. Um, Bucky will do things that will shock me. Troy will do things that will shock me. Tez con uh, continuously does things that shock me. So it's more about watching other guys and, and just being like, wow, those guys are on my team, on my offense. How explosive are we, and how can I get them the ball? What was your reaction to the CFP rankings that came out this week? Where you guys stand there? I don't really have a reaction, to be honest with you. Is there any chatter among the team at all, or is it just nah? I don't think majority of us even know the number, but I don't know. Dan called the Ty, Ty's opportunity today vital to his progression. What did you oh, see out there, and, and can just his, well, he his goes progression? Out there, he goes out there and he executes, and there's no um, step back. He goes out there and he knows what to do with the ball. He prepares, you know, exactly like I do. We go in there and we attack the preparation. We're very clued in on what we want, what the coaches want. And he goes out there and executes, and he gets two touchdowns up on the board when um, they're crucial times. So I think that's really good for his production, and you know, it only provides him with confidence. Would you say he's? You go ahead. What does it mean to you to hold the record for the most starts in FBS history? It means a lot. I think any record is cool, and you know, to be able to play for that long, is, it's an honor. And um, you can only just speak to the teams that I've been a part of, and them allowing me to to play that many snaps, and um, you know, keep me upright. And I've been fortunate enough to um, you know be available a lot of the times, and um, it's just just grit and hard work, and that's really what it comes down to. And um, you know, all all glory to God and. Um, he's really put me in an unbelievable um, place in life, and he's blessed me so much. And obviously, I would not be here without him. And it sounds cliche, but seriously, I've seen wonders and wonders over and over that you know I should not be here. And, and you know, he picked me, and I'm, I'm just extremely fortunate. How, how close is Ty 
to running is like how close is he to being a starting caliber quarterback? Is he already there in your eyes? Yeah, yeah, I, I think he's he's there, and um, whenever he gets his opportunity, it'll be on. Thank y'all. Thanks, Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob.